let's go ahead and get into Real Housewives of Potomac since mm. since we're here in Bravo land. Oh, okay. Cute. You know, um, do you guys want to do a quick little, you know, I feel like we don't need to do the looks because we've all done the looks. But, I mean, let's just do your best and your worst. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Yes, Very best easy. and worst. I I'll go first to, you know, give y'all time. I'm going to say I think <clears throat> my best, I think, was Candace. My worst was either Giselle or Robin. It was one of the wow. other. Wow. Wow. My best was Karen. My worst was NECA. Oh, my. <laughs> she. I feel like everybody showed up except for NECA. But, you know, it's her first season. My best was Karen. And my worst was Robin. Okay. Really? I actually like Robin's look. That. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pants. <laughs> the pants. And the, the bob. bob. Without the tire tracks, no, ma'am. Really? Wow. Yes, the Bob hmm. was definitely um a bit stiff. Um, not to come to all the way to the reunion and let Giselle outdress you with simplicity. I'm a little disappointed. You um, think she her? That's when we decided with, with the worst for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I do. I I did not like Robin's outfit. I thought I was. I didn't. It was giving matrix. I didn't like it. <laughs> I think like. That, villain it could have it could have been the hair that really did it i don't know like i just i, I, I feel, feel like the leave out was stiff it was the leave i could see stiff. the separation between her hair and the weave and i feel mm -hmm. like when you're on tv i mean in general so no mm -hmm. but especially when you're on tv you got time to print it didn't I mean, have at least pop. Ineka tried. That's why i couldn't yeah. give Ineka the very low really y'all yeah Look at the material Look at look but at everybody the, how the has some extra going on except for Giselle. I'm no, like, no, she tried to get it off the fucking rack. Everybody else at least went to somebody to get their shit made. She got it off the Macy's. See? JC yeah, Pete it is giving JC. I hate that for her, and it just goes to show y'all when I tell y'all looks don't mean nothing. Looks don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you 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 can't dress. You ain't got no man. You ain't got no woman. You don't have no personality. You got a little bit of money, but not really because you can't afford better clothes or to construct your house at once. Like, you know, a disappointment. And this is no, I promise y'all, we just be talking. I really don't mean any disrespect to anybody. I really, really don't. Um, I just hate that she stuck with the same hairstylist after eight years. It's like, at some point, don't people get new ones while being on the show? Mm. Yeah. And well, no, she, remember, she had the bangs, uh, the thick, the five pack of the Remy hair all uh -huh. the, across the forehead. I remember the, first the, season. the crinkles or something like that the first season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that, was like, that Ryle right? did that? He that, was, was, no, no. That, that was Giselle. Giselle. I remember. You're right. That was Giselle. Giselle did that? Yeah, you don't remember she had the straight across bang. Yeah, I remember arguing. that. I'm trying to see who did her head. That was probably the, the one that's that, on the show. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. He's been there from the beginning. He's still there, and nothing has I improved. Don't know why he? Because that's I funny. would not be telling people for as long as he's been on the show. I would not step on the show saying I was her hairstylist. At this point, remove the hairstylist title because I feel like that's not good advertisement for him. Right. You need to just come on and show saying that you are a friend. Do not let people know that you are responsible for mm -mm. the hair we've been seeing for however long. Mm -mm. <laughs> Please don't do it. Cal, yes. It's embarrassing, Cal. Nobody should go to Cal for anything if Giselle is the model. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying. I don't know who even styled her because you know what works on my nerves about her? I feel like she's always trying to give um, like reserved, right? She's always in her church lady mindset. Mm -hmm. But you would thought. So mm -hmm. give it a rest. Like I'm just saying, like when I really think about it, so is a thought wants to be a thought but wants to be able to have like that pedestalized uh you know persona especially mm -hmm. coming from being in a church and all of that and you think she's a thought yeah i don't think she got nothing going <laughs> on like, i don't think yeah. she she's ever had anything going on oh no i when, when, remember when karen said she was a hot put i, I believe i believe Ms. I, Sister I, hot put. Oh, maybe I'm back happy. down at hampton but yeah maybe at hampton but i don't think I Giselle... know. this is the time this is the hot pussy years like hmm. 
I don't know what Giselle got going on, but I do know from those clips that we did see that's coming up for the reunion, Mia gonna kind of bust her out about dating other people. So the man that we've been seeing her with ain't the only person that she's been dating. Then she's gonna say, because Andy's gonna bring up something about him kissing another woman, and she's gonna say, oh, he already told me about that, but I don't care what any man that I'm seeing does beyond my yeah. eyes basically if i don't witness it then i don't care mm -hmm. um i don't Robin. believe that don't downplay that especially for you to turn around and introduce that man to your children mm. had them all up around the children child grace mm -hmm. was like what is happening here and the kids didn't even really want to meet them it wasn't giving you no. a force in them to be in the scene to interact with this man to make you look good for television like what's going but on that yeah. clip that you're talking about, Jamie, for next week also was giving NECA and Mia caught the assist to make Giselle look better. Um, Andy started asking her about this fake relationship. And as soon as he did, NECA goes, but are you dating other people? Like, oh, let's let's spin it to a positive. And then Mia mm -hmm. brings up the guy she's dating instead of everybody talking about this contractual relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, look at y'all trying to help her get out of it. That's all they do is protect her. And it's it's really obnoxious, to be honest. Um, so at the reunion show, I feel like, you know, main shit to me was them gaslighting Candace. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like everybody was acting as if they didn't know what has basically happened or taken place. Um, and I do feel like it's a reflection of colorism. Um, somebody sent me them clips on Twitter that's going around from I think that was what season one or two of Real Housewives of Potomac with Katie and Katie called Giselle and Robin out for questioning her about her racial identity. Mm -hmm. And I want to play the audio from those because I feel like everybody acts like whenever we're talking about Candace, like somebody literally tweeted me and said that she's making shit up in her head. And I'm like, oh no, see, bitch, that's what we're not going to do. I said, and I stand on this, that Robin has been trying to prove her blackness low key through her relationship with Juan. Being with a baller and being dogged out and cheated on and being the stick beside him, ride or die, is what I think she thinks black women do in their relationships, which is why she's so committed to that image. Okay. Um, hold up. I'm pulling up this 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 sound because I want to make sure we can we can hear it. But I'm going I'm to see if I can cover because, you know, yeah, I'm going to cover it because I don't, I don't want the sound. You know, I don't want the video to cause no copyright. Right. We're going to let it rock. Giselle and Robin, why was it important that Katie define herself to you? No. And to um, find my children, which was no. What? My father was in the rights movement. So when we were little, we had the KKK burning sign in our yard on a weekly basis. My father had death threats every day. What they didn't show was that when we were at the baby naming ceremony for Katie, she made reference to the black side like it was demeaning. Like, oh no, I would never be considered liar, black. Giselle. If you're half black, one fourth black, 2% black, be proud of that. Are you not proud so, of it? I have no idea what she's talking about. I and once again, it's like, why would you come to someone's house for a religious naming ceremony, you know, and then go outside and go in on them and challenge we, them about- We didn't go in. Your... We didn't go. We just okay. asked you a simple question. And then for Robin to bring up, okay, well, when your girls are older, what box are they going to check? What the why hell are you talking about? Yeah, Katie, why you did you know? even bring no, no, no. that up? But Katie, just you so know it. that you said something I, wrong. I, That's why you sported I, the Jackson 5 Afro. Oh. The Jackson 5 Afro? Yes. Remember the Afro? you don't know. First of all, I have to stop right there. That's offensive as fuck for her to call the Jackson 5 Afro because when you look at the picture, that literally just looks like Katie's natural hair. So whenever black people call an Afro a Jackson 5 Afro, I assume they are far removed from their blackness or they have some internalized uh, racism. You know, they, they hate depictions of blackness because why is your only reference point for an Afro Jackson 5? know my family my mother is from savannah georgia right she lived in the segregated south just like your family you're not proud of that this is so okay ignorant. okay okay okay, 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 okay. okay. About, okay. wow katie, dumb, katie, dumb, katie. dumb and dumber no oh you know what you better shut the hell up i asked you a simple question I why do i have to answer any of your questions rob oh i'm sorry y'all because how many times do they keep acting like robin doesn't dig in anybody's ass and i feel like this was robin until shit started happening with wine always asking these stupid ass fucking questions like she did with Katie here. And I'm just asking a question.
Robin, I don't care. Hold on, I want to hear from her. I want you to understand what that you're not biracial. Shut up. You know what? Y'all better get security here for real, because after what? What are you gonna do? Shut up. Ooh. Are you aware that half of my family is white? Katie, so you're I was talking about I my, you. my father, my grandparents, okay, my cousins. Go. They all don't like me. Wow. Katie, I don't Thank know you where for clarifying. No, Katie, that. I was getting ready to say that I don't know where they put that in. Like, I don't know how this show became the poster show for race relations in America. Because you're talking However, about it all the time. Are you aware that yeah. my Because you're talking about it all the time, bitch. Because you're talking about it all the time. I'm gonna ask Ashley your opinion. Your, oh, by you Rachel, your reaction to all this. I was just really surprised because the two women who have the most European features seem to make the biggest deal of race. When most of us embrace our naturalness, for some reason, they don't. What? Coloring your hair blonde. Ashley, shut your stupid ass up. Girl, shut the up. only reason, up. the only reason I agree with Ashley is because at the time <clears throat> they would clown Ashley for wearing her natural hair. They would, you know, what I'm saying they would make their little comments and shit. And so it's kind of like, how are you gonna talk to Katie about her blackness when you, in fact, have your issues when people showcase what is considered to be black, especially if it's something that you deem, you know, um unsavory like natural hair you know what i'm saying you know, i'm yeah. i'm low-key remembering how i felt i don't remember what happened but i remember how i felt when i watched this mm -hmm. and when i watched it i remember being in agreement with robin and giselle only because from what i remember was when katie came on the show she was hell bent on letting everybody know she was mixed she had a white man because are her kids were her kids black and she was raising them to be Jewish. That is the part right there, Nisi. That's the part right. right there. Yeah, their dad is white. But the reason they were calling into question why or what box would they check was because Katie had a whole Jewish shit ceremony for kids that were not Jewish. But right, she but loved them so loved that, you know, religion so much that she was trying to thrust her kids into that. Her kid's father was the white man. I thought the white man was their stepdad. The he white, was, yeah, he was he was the stepdad. Okay, okay, okay that's why. Right. But okay. their dad is white. Oh, okay, their dad is white too, mm -hmm. but yeah. they just aren't Jewish. Correct. Okay. But just, he had the ceremony, so I guess they Jewish now. But and I just, it it's nothing wrong with them being Jewish, but I just remember her trying to brand herself like that so much on the show that it was almost as though she wanted to reject any of her blackness. So I remember being in agreement with Robin and Giselle, but I can say at the same time, the way that Robin and Giselle are coming for her is because I think they're projecting their experiences on her because mm -hmm. they look so white, like yes. white adjacent. Exactly. I think like, especially with Giselle coming from, and y'all be for real, I know these women don't look white, but because they are lighter, closer to whiteness, mm -hmm. and Giselle coming from a family of Robin people who white. were in the civil rights movement, you've seen Robin's parents on the show, Robin's mama is giving me black woman. Like, she, you hear the bass in her voice when she talks, her daddy is giving black men. Robin was raised to know that she's a black woman too. So I think Robin and Giselle probably have this internalized, let me prove and let me let people yes. know I'm black. that I am black. Mm -hmm. And that's how Katie should be moving as well. So I just remember the way I felt, I, I remember being in agreement with Robin and Giselle. I did at the time too. Mm -hmm. But when I watched this back, it just kind of reminds me that now that we're dealing with Candace and they act like they have no idea what the fuck Candace is talking about, mm -hmm. it's yep. cat. Go yeah, ahead, this, show, up, yep, this show was founded on, on that. Like, I think when they created Potomac, this is what they wanted to begin with because Sharice was the only dark woman on the show. And I, I don't know how they got to Sharice for Sharice to uh, recommend her friends and they chose whoever they wanted. Um, I don't know how she, they, they got to her for her to only be the dark skinned one, the only darkest woman on the show. But they wanted this. This is what they wanted. I think so. They cast and all these light true. women. They they wanted this racial conversation, but they don't want to. They're not in a place to actually have the proper conversations right. either. But that's what y'all yeah. wanted. Yeah, I think it's hilarious though. Like when you really think about it, because because Katie was biracial and they are not technically, they felt that they were blacker than her, so that they could hold her feet to the carpet about accepting her blackness. When essentially nobody has to question what what Katie is like. Nobody's questioning Katie's race. You look at Katie. Katie looks like a black woman, regardless of the fact that she's biracial. Her mom's black. For a lot of us, you're black. Okay, mm -hmm. so 
-hmm. her i think wanting to accept her own shit comes from people ignoring her other side because she is identifiably black mm -hmm. so i think yeah. what you have happening here is two you know two people that are having two types of people that are having an experience with racism both of them feeling like they need to prove what people may not see by looking at them the problem robin and giselle is that they really did the most <clears throat> to hold katie accountable for anti-blackness but mm -hmm. when they treat candace and wendy like they're on the outskirts and candace and wendy say you're doing the same thing to us even i mean and to be honest candace and wendy didn't even say it at first candace didn't want to admit that it was colorism remember when it happened with her and monique her and Monique yeah. got online and said that they don't think that giselle and the cast are colorist and i said and y'all would be dumb if y'all don't think that she even did on angela Yee this year said that she didn't believe it was color that she she didn't believe that her castmates were colorist candace said that this year which is insane to me because Candace, why the fuck do you think they treat you and Wendy the way they treat y'all? Karen has said two things about just Robin has gone in on everybody whenever it was time to, okay, except for Giselle, of course. But I'm just saying they've had the issues with Ashley. Ashley still accepted into the fold. They don't even know Mia and they accepted her into the fold. They were okay mm -hmm. with Mia putting her hands on Wendy. But mm -hmm. when Candace and Monique get into the fight all of a sudden it's violence and I won't stand for this it was pump faking back then and it's pump faking now and I that's why I was that's why I was so gung-ho and feeling like I wanted to defend Monique back mm -hmm. then because I knew that it wasn't about the actual fight it was about the fact that you was looking for an opportunity to get her off the show because you've been mad since she told you she had four houses, four houses yeah yeah, you've been mad ever since that because you don't have that. And you felt like she was coming into this group and she was supposed to kiss your ring because you had a the Mean Girl squad in a sorority. And Monique came into the, the place like, bitch, I don't need to kiss your ring. I have more money than you. You didn't mm -hmm. like that. You didn't like that. So you, you, I think she tried to like sun her the entire time. And then when Monique responded with the, the remember when she brought old boy's uh, ex-wife on the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That put it into the hell for Giselle. Giselle then decided that she was going to get Monique off the show come hella high water. And I think she did with Candace and Monique the same thing she did with Aneka and Wendy. You're going to use one of them to get rid of the other. And to me, if that isn't the greatest example of how racism works in this country, mm. girl, I, I know something. Okay. No, and then also how they didn't condone physical violence when Monique was to prove a point right. with Monique turn mm -hmm. around to this season when um what's that girl deborah got ready to put or deborah tried to put her hands on candace they were like mm, understandable hmm. right the goal is always moving always moving always moving um what did y'all think about the way robin refuses to be honest about the situation with Juan, but then question Candace about Chris's limp penis was so shade. And we all saw those. I was like, so you mean to tell me you don't understand that somebody can send a, a fake dick pic and say that it belongs to somebody. But as long as you can't see the person in the picture, you can't prove that that's their dick, stupid. And she knew it was fake. Yeah, she knew it was fake. She probably yeah, but with that intentionally withheld that in order to make Candace look like a clown. Hmm. Yep. Like what? That was to wild. Me, they proved in this point throughout the entire reunion. Anything that Candace said about how they moved the goalposts, about how they treat her, all of that to me was proven throughout the show, even up to the, the allegations against Chris. Because Giselle still said he uh what did she, she say? She uh he didn't make me, but she said he wanted me to go to a hotel room and he knew. He knew that's what she said. He knew that my team wasn't in there. She mm -hmm. said that on a reunion show. He knew that my room was empty and he asked me to go to my room. Why do you keep saying he knew that nobody was in your room? He did not know that nobody was in your room. You are the one with the key to your room. So you had to go in your room and see that nobody was in there before he did. And you didn't see shit. But then let's say he did know that nobody was in your room. I feel like the whole point of him pulling you to the side to have a conversation was so y'all can have a one-on-one -on -one any damn way. Mm -hmm. It was for y'all two to talk. Which you didn't you have just didn't like what the hell he said to your ass, so you made a situation out of it. Mm. And the reason why she was so uncomfortable was because you've been talking about this man's penis for five seasons at this point. Mm. <laughs> like, 
she would have fucked him. She don't need him to have money, so she would have fucked him. You know, Giselle is one of them ones that, you know, she low-key looked down on, on women that fuck for money. She thinks she's better than Mia and Ashley. <laughs> she do, which is crazy to me. Um, So that's why I said she a hoe, because I think, you know, she'll just be out here having sex just to get her rocks off like a nigga, because she's unemotional. Mm. That's really why I think she a hoe. And also because like around, and you know, I don't care about nobody being a hoe, but I'll call her one just because she works on my nerves and she's judgmental to everybody. So why can't I put that same shit on her? Um, Was there anything else from the reunion besides Juan not being there that you guys? The fact that nobody recalled um, Giselle saying that Chris squeezed Deborah's butt. Ooh. That was the sexual assault right there. But mm -hmm. but nobody could bring it up on stage. I'm like, damn, everybody just collectively forgot that the, the argument was about whether she said made me or asked me to go to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. And they kept trying to put Candace on the spot to, you know, pull out proof that she indeed did accuse him of sexual assault. But nobody recalled it. And I wish that somebody, if Candace didn't remember, you know, would have brought that up because she did. It was on camera. It sure was. When they got in that band. And she knew she was she she knew it was a lie because she laughed about it to Ashley when she was on to I think it was Ashley or Robin when she got on the bus and was laughing about it. I think it was Robin. Cause I think Robin had got upset and walked out and got on yes. the bus. And then Giselle went and got on there and told her what Ashley had uh -huh. said and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. So. Y'all, it's 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 so obnoxious to me to allow her to get away with all of this shit. Um what do y'all think about uh <laughs> what did y'all think about Ashley saying that she hold Michael come in her mouth until he fall asleep? I thought I, that was so disgusting. You remember when Candy said that she was like, you know, basically a maid mattress and a mule and a slave? <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you rubbing feet and holding cum in your mouth? That sounds mm -hmm. like slavery to me. Oh gosh. <laughs> Y'all be mad at Candace for saying shit, and I feel like she be right. You know what I'm saying? It's giving. <laughs> what, what did she call her? She called she her, called her a bed witch. Uh, girl, if that ain't what a bed witch gonna That's do, she <laughs> her. <laughs> some feet, hold some semen in her throat, girl. Oh my god, That's disgusting. Okay, and the last thing, Mia and Gordon. Okay, can I tell y'all the truth? I don't care. Everybody keeps really? saying Mia coming, coming from the number one spot. When I tell y'all I'm so disinterested in Mia's storyline, Mia has lied so much on the show that I am disinterested in anything going on with her because I don't feel like it's real. That's um, fair. That's and then fair. when I'm mm -hmm. looking at this situation with Ink and, and Obo, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, but it's cloudish. It, it, yeah, it is cloudish. It, it, it seems like why was he calling her so many times while she was at the reunion show for Gordon to turn around and say, Well, you know, maybe he's just worried about you. I was like, What is going on here? Like, hey, true I'm glad y'all feel that way. Up. Yes, Jamie. <laughs> because uh, for one, I found myself getting really excited about it when I was telling the review. I was like, yeah, finally, this is what we've been wanting, honest stories. And then once I said the word honest and then realized I was talking about Mia, I was like, hold up. <laughs> like that, that don't add up. It, it really is given. Maybe she's not with Ink. Maybe her and G are still together and the financial ruins were true. And this is y'all's tactic to get your money back up. And you know, and you're gonna drop this at the very end of the season. So you know they had to cut the cameras back on, which is gonna give you negotiation power for the next season. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe this is something who would bring up their kids' paternity on TV? Who who would do that shit? Besides me, Lisey, you are so you make so much sense because I'm thinking about how Gordon has been fake, in my opinion. This entire most of this season and last season, acting like everything's good, she's perfect, she's the perfect wife. Remember how he said that at the little event? She's the mm -hmm. perfect wife. Like he's been playing up a role. So mm -hmm. if you were acting then, knowing that this lady done told you that, oh, this is her uh her what what true love or first love or whatever, high yeah. school sweetheart, all this other shit, and you just been going with it. No, here's the thing for me. When he sat in front of her, and I think it was on the finale of the episode before, and he said, we wouldn't find ourselves in a situation like Ashley and them because, you know, we would come up with some type of arrangement. Mm -hmm. But the That's whole time, 
right that's mutually beneficial and based on the storyline y'all are feeding to us now there was already an arrangement in place so gordon mm -hmm. likes to play in our damn face along with mia and i definitely feel like this is what they came up with and gordon could potentially be the brains hello for this to play out how it needs to for her to continue to secure these bags because her check is the only one that they have right now and he has to get his allowance and i want y'all to understand something about old niggas interesting once the penis doesn't work and the money is gone they're gonna hold on to whoever they have because they know it's not easy to get somebody else you can't mm -hmm. even fuck a, a new young girl you know what i'm saying what you gonna do pay a five thousand dollars so you can eat a coochie out you only have five thousand dollars to give you can't fuck and you have money like that to be spending on I mean, you got to hold on to Mia's ass come hook a crook, which is why he took a phone and locked in the room and all of that. That's because yeah. he can't move on like mm -hmm. he did with her. Mm -hmm. I don't feel sorry for Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, I know everybody feels like Mia must have, you know, magic coochie. And I'm like, that's not what it is. Niggas are way weaker than, than y'all know, especially when they don't have other options. Right. And why would you reach out to Eddie? That he sound like team. He was trying to destroy. And another thing, it felt like they called, they specifically, that's the funny part. Because that's why another thing, you're you right, Nisa, set up. Why the fuck y'all call Wendy and, Ro I mean, Wendy and Candace, not anybody else? And I think. Oh, no. Karen said he called, called her too. Yeah. But Karen that's the other side, though. That's people who have issue with Mia. Oh, it's I got you. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. why I feel like it's a setup. Because to me, it feel like. You told the people who you had beef with because you thought they were going to spray it. And when they didn't spray it, because honestly, I feel like that's the reason why Candace and Wendy was like, they didn't call her because, bitch, we knew you was trying to bait us and you wasn't going to bait us. That's why Candace laughed at her ass mm -hmm. when it was time to ask her that question. She just said, "Ooh, <laughs> you want to go? Wendy said, you go. You got it. Because <laughs> they saw through the BS to begin yes. with. Yes. I do believe that. Um, I think it's all cap. I don't because this is my question. So if he thinks the baby is his, the, the kid, how you just show up to somebody's house and ask for your kid, which you was gonna take him and take care of him, you still fucking his mama. That don't even make sense to me for him to show up and try to take the son as if the mama is not in the house with the son and you still fucking the mama. And another thing, if you felt that way, why haven't y'all got eternity test? Like you said, she told more yeah she's so gordon when it first happened and to me any man i know like okay men do men do one thing they feign ignorance so that they don't have to deal with something i know a nigga right now that need a uh, need a fucking uh paternity test and he acting like he ain't get it and he don't won't get it and i'm like well she never mind we're not gonna put that out on front street but either way <laughs> He needed to get a paternity <laughs> test and he didn't want to get the paternity test. He don't want to get okay. the paternity test. He does mm -hmm. not want to believe that the girl cheating on him. So he would rather raise the baby and have another child and have all this extra on himself than go get a paternity test because he don't want nobody to know that he was out here fucking with a broad that cheated on him and had a baby with another nigga on him. And now you over here raising it, calling it yours, taking care of it, going to the hospital and shit. So niggas will care more about their ego when it comes to like raising these kids and all of that so i can believe that gordon never wanted it but why the fuck ink never wanted it if you care so much to show up to the house banging on the door talking about where my son at yeah that that's that's all giving cap and an arrangement that y'all set up to come to us with the bullshit because y'all want to remain on this show and i'm gonna just tell you mia Mia, you are not strong enough to be the front runner of this show. And honestly, uh -uh. Giselle is not strong enough to be the front runner of this show. But whoever's in charge must like her so much that they want her in that spot because she hasn't been given anything. If this was any other housewife franchise, she would never be in that first seat and she would have been fired. Maybe I want to say season six. Because huh. mm. she hasn't really given anything since season six. Yeah, I can see that. I do want to also uh, highlight the fact that a lot of us felt like Candace's poster board, her prop, uh, did not land. And although I did not enjoy it, to be honest, it actually it did do something. It exposed me because I fell off. It, it exposed the fact that Robin be in these chats 
with these other bloggers. Y'all sat up there and tried to comfort Candace for the things oh. that she says out loud on Twitter. And then because y'all don't tweet, you want to make it seem like, oh, we don't be on the same stuff that she's on. We don't do that type of stuff. But you're over there in a group chat with other folks talking cash money or whatever about your castmates and you're using other people to do your dirty work i feel like i feel like Lightness you ain't no candy. better no yeah y'all ain't no better than candace another to thing is you mad at your fucking friend you mad at giselle and yes. we can't even see the interaction on the show what type of show do we have where y'all mad at each other and y'all hiding it to the point that y'all pretend because robin lied on stage robin said when when candace brought out the poster boards she said that never happened and then turned around and said they talked about it bitch which mm -hmm. one is it did you talk to the bloggers or not did you talk to Giselle? They didn't talk about it. They no, didn't they talk, did talk about, about it. it. But it Giselle's response right. of, oh, mm -hmm. I already knew she felt that way. That was a lie. That was you coming in to help your friend because y'all yeah. have a pact. Yes. Absolutely. 1,000%. Um, yeah. It's gonna, this, this is going to be an interesting like season next season, y'all. Do y'all think she got fired? I'm going to ask y'all that. Robin, you know absolutely. I think she got fired. I am on reserve about her actually being fired only because of an interview that Ashley Darby did with this news station saying that, that she was surprised to hear that Candace left because they don't know anything. They haven't even gotten their contracts yet to hear anything. And they asked her about Rob and she said it's the same thing. Like, I'm surprised if that is the case because none of us have heard anything about whether we're staying or going. Well, didn't people come out with the Robin story? No, just the Jasmine oh, it brand. Wasn't people. Oh. But usually Jasmine is not wrong. We we haven't seen that's what I said. Cause somebody said they don't believe it because of you know Jasmine's friends with Wendy and um Candace. But I'm like, but Jasmine doesn't really post lies. Like, well, 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 I will say this. I will say for myself, okay. Go um, on. I enjoy Jasmine Brand. However, when they put that statement out saying that Escape and SWV was returning for a TV show. Mm. That was not true. No, yeah. that wasn't In addition, true. Another before. thing they did was the Ray J selling the company back or whatever to Raycon Global and he got $75 million back or whatever. Do y'all know that's a lot of money? And if that really was happening, uh, some other financial business insider or somebody would have picked that up and reported on that and not just them. I felt like Ray J fed that story to them to to come to Ray us. Ray J did it. sell though, didn't he? Because I feel like he sold and used the money for that for the new network that he started. That's what he say. And see, that's what I was questioning more so the amount. Was it really seventy five million? Oh, yeah. you the amount Ray might have been high. The, yeah, that's what I think he was finessing that for sure. Okay. But um, I, I mean, I, I think yeah, I can't say that they one hundred percent accurate. Okay. I don't know. I I'll have to wait and see. No, Jasmine Brown has been slipping lately. That's why I said they used to be one of the ones that I would go to primarily. Yes, oh. they definitely used to be my number but one. No, I'm I'm talking about he, might have, he might have sold Raycon for $75 million because, y'all, it's a technology company. And believe it or not, it's very well, it, it was never his company. And see, that's what I thought, too, till I watched him on Breakfast Club. It was never his company. He kind of came in as, like, the face of it. And it only made sense because he's Ray J, right? So what he did was, I, I don't know if he had some shares or whatever his involvement was, he kind of gave it back to them because they were going into a different direction than what he was going in or what he was trying to do. So I, okay. I definitely believe they broke him off some bread. I was just questioning the $75 million. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you, got you. And he had shares. I'm just, I, I wouldn't was not, I said, damn, I thought that was his company this whole time. No, I thought no, Raycon was his. Was cool and it, I know mm -hmm. that, that's the reason why I call her Prinky to this day. Y'all, they was on Tasha K. So who is Prink? Bitch, can you deduce who I'm talking about here? We're we looking at a picture of two people. Her name is Princess and I'm calling her Prink. That, that don't sound familiar to you, slow bus bitches? Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes. They remember they was outside. <laughs> he was. I got a surprise. I got a surprise for you, prank, and take her to the billboard for the scooty bikes. Like what the fuck they got to do with Prinky? Prinky, Prinky Try. got in the car and he he was standing there with the scooty bike prank. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. That shit lived rent free in my mind. So she's been Prinky, prank ever since. That's true. Hey, because he, he called her out there like he was doing something for her, and it was really about him. Like. I I, 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 getting a divorce. I hope she because she put out a statement 
another statement I think yesterday or today, but I'm gonna just say, Prank, I really hope you standing strong and you standing on business and you divorce him. Take half of the assets and go be happy and live your life freely. I know you feel like you need to stay with him. You can even go back and fuck him if you want to, but don't be married to him no more. Go get you a separate house, go get your freedom. You know what I'm saying? Go you making your money like a nice little Asian lady down to the uh poker tables and shit. Go on ahead and live your life, girl. Cause Ray J. Ray J is for the streets until he have a heart attack. Like <laughs> I do want to say this real quick about Raycon because I had to look this up. Um, and I could have misunderstood Ray J in the interview because how he made it seem with Raycon Global, like it as if it wasn't his company, but he and his dad, from my understanding, founded that company. So his dad must Come have on, bought him out of that. And that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm th I mean, he his dad could have. Yeah, let me make sure. I mean, yeah. that's still his money. That to me, that sounds like a way for Prince that. not to get. Let me see. That sounds like a way for Princess oh. not to get. Half. No, no, no. I'm hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Let me go back. Bro. Let me go back. Let me yeah, go. Back. Let me like, make sure. Ooh. That's giving hiding assets. <laughs> no, he. Mm, mm, mm. Let me make sure because there's a different guy coming up i'm sure there's a white guy i'm sure there's always a white guy even diddy has a white guy there's always a white guy maybe jewish hmm. <laughs> there's a no no no. okay um there's a ray lee that whoever that ray lee is that's not his dad but that's a whoever this ray lee person is that's who he I guess founded it with, and that person had to end up, I guess, buying him out. Yeah, because they were going in a different no. direction than what Ray J wanted to go in. But I'm trying to find out who the hell is Ray Lee. Right. The right. Is, like, is that for another Ray. name for Willie? That's what I'm saying. Cause Cause Ray J is a junior. He is Willie Ray Norwood, the senior in the junior. Right, but they, I mean, the first and last name is given Ray Lee, so I don't know. Oh, it's given Asian. I thought so. I okay, was just I according to the the LinkedIn profile, it's giving that um this is an Asian guy. Mm. Yeah, that's not Ray, about Ray J so. and Ray Lee. He probably had the capital. That's another thing. Ray J had money. He's always had money because Brandy and him family has always seemingly been smart about their shit. So, y'all, I don't know if y'all pay attention to Hollywood stories, but any Hollywood, or maybe like 93. Ray J is always you said pay attention about, to Hollywood. What stories like stories oh. about bad boys, stories about record labels, stories about artists. Ray J is always around somewhere. Yes. Ray J's real name is, oh, uh, what is it? Willie Ray Norwood. Yeah, uh -huh. I think it, it's Raymond, right? Willie Raymond Nor Norwood, something like that. Yeah, Willie Raymond Norwood. But I just, I've noticed for a long time. And so this is my, y'all, this is, and we're going to do this Real House of the Potomac thing. But while we talking about Ray J, y'all, I'm not going to lie. Y'all know Diddy's going down. We're going to talk about Diddy at the end of the show. But it also feels to me like Ray J might be low-key the replacement in some manner. Okay, as the for, party, for Diddy. As the entertainment you know, a uh, party guy. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the parties. I got the girls. I got the drugs. Whatever you need, you know, y'all can come through and enjoy a party. The only reason why I feel like that is because him taking over, like him having his beef with Zeus Network and starting his own network and taking people from MTV and VH1 and being as smart as he is, is given Ray J is only going to get more notoriety as far as business and entertainment his personal life is going to go down to the shitter which means he's going to end up being a single i fuck all of these women like diddy type dude and i was just i don't know it was something about him taking suki hana shopping buying a uh, safari the new mm. car it was something about all of that that just kind of made me feel like there's always another one so as much as everybody thinks oh we're getting rid of big bad with diddy you know, those of us that see Diddy as a big bad, because a lot of y'all don't see Diddy as a big bad. I don't know why. Like, where have y'all been for the past 30 years? But, you know, I kind of see as a big bad. So he's a guy that's going to take advantage and do whatever, make sure he's on top, but in a narcissistic, fucked up way. Hmm. And something about Ray J makes me feel like he might be vying for that role in the circle. He's a little on the outskirts, but not really. If you pay attention, he was there with Puff. A lot, you know, all of them niggas, he was there for a lot of those times. And let's not forget, 
show up with the book bag with Whitney, show up with the book bag with Wendy. Like, and that's what I, you know, the Whitney and, Whitney and Wendy connections, which I know what the connections were, but his, Sheesh. it was just odd. It just, it's just giving me y'all keep y'all eye on Jay because it's been, if he don't have the, the woman and the family to give him something to pretend to be good for, it's going to go down the diddy path. <laughs> okay. And, and another mm-hmm. thing, Ray J is, is, you know, Ray J is, is gang. That's another thing everybody forgets about. Um, he's, he grows, he's gang. Like he's involved. He's affiliated with what? Which which one? Either Bloods or the Crips, but he's affiliated with one of those. Huh. Oh my, Ray! And he, I would have never thought any of this. Oh yeah, no, he he says it too. I think he you know he'll be like Blood or Gang, whatever the fuck he'll say. I think it's Blood, um, because the Snoop right and they're cousins, um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, Bloods. Everybody in the comments saying Bloods, yeah. So I, I just be paying attention to like what really be going on, and I don't know if y'all noticed with Diddy. Everybody thinks that Diddy is like shiny, funny, party guy, charismatic, might get a little out of hand. But no, actually, Diddy is really like a thug. Like if anybody pays attention to how nigga them rolled up on people and always gang gang, I think he took the Russell Simmons thing with the brother love, right? I know I got a lot of shit going on. I need to make sure my image is clean. So I'm going to give y'all yoga, brother love, let's spread love. But secretly, you know, I'm out here doing the most. Snoop is a mm. crip. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I-, I can't keep up with the gang affiliations. All I know is him and Ray J are cousins and mm. Ray J claims gang. That's the two things I know. Oh, wow. mm. I didn't know that. I mean, and y'all know back in the day, both Crips and Bloods came from the same organization, Black Panthers. Mm-hmm. And then eventually oh. branched out. Like, don't play on my top too much, okay? But anyway, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, that's me speculating because y'all know how y'all like to say I don't be no, you know, I be lying and all that. And then like a year oh. later, everybody be like, Bondi was right. So I do think there's a replacement somewhere in the mix. I've been watching the clips from that psychic Sloan, mm-hmm. and she was explaining how Diddy is basically a pawn. Mm. Like there's people bigger than him and he can't speak for whatever reason because he's protecting people bigger than him. Like he's just a chess piece, basically. I believe it. Everybody's a chess piece at the end of the day because the entertainment industry is meant to distract. At its at its core of organization in this country, it is to distract from what's really important. If mm-hmm. we got you niggas dancing and, and you know doing all this in the videos and paying attention, we can continue to take advantage of you in the real world while we're entertaining you. That's something that they've you know understood since the jazz days. Since they stopped investigating artists just for doing music and black power shit, you know, like that's what they used to do FBI and all them to investigate all of the jazz artists back in the day because they're the jazz art is actually influential in that power movement. It was of secrecy, but they were involved. So, like, for instance, not even just the jazz artist, um, Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin was involved. So, like, I can remember back in the day, you know, my people would tell stories whenever they would have something going on. Everybody would meet up at Dookie Chase down here in New Orleans. Aretha would be there. And it was a place, Martin Luther King, you know, New Orleans was a place that they would all kind of meet and converge. And it was like the entertainers. And the politician people involved in church, which your politicians and your church people are usually the same people. But those connections have always kind of been important to entertainment and society. So I think at some point, you know, the federal hood figure it out and they infiltrate. So now instead of them investigating artists, now they, I think, kind of put people in place to put these artists in certain situations so that you can get them hemmed up and have them on something so that you can use them for whatever you want to use them for. Right. The thing with Diddy, though, is I feel like Diddy's a fucked up individual all by himself. So I want people to stop acting like he's being taken advantage of because he's not. Diddy has been involved. And I wish people would read what Diddy's actually being accused of. We're going to wait on it, y'all. But let's just, because, you know, we already an hour in. We don't want to keep the mama tip for too long. So... 
we had Nicki Minaj and the rest of the girls from Real Housewives of Potomac, NECA, Sharice, Giselle, Robin, Ashley. I don't know who this other person is in the background, but yeah. Okay, guys, first of all, huh? I think that might be Ashley's friend with the blonde hair that had pulled, uh, that had jumped in. At the say happy. I just want to say thank you to the Real Housewives <laughs> of Potomac for coming to for coming to gag city dc yes. Yes. it was okay. a this show is a so she can't Nicki minaj actually canceled her show in new orleans and everybody was upset and she was saying she got sick and had the flu i don't believe that i believe she didn't sell as many tickets so she canceled the show just like burner boy did um people don't have no money like that it's not shade to the artist but people don't have money like that during this time and usually when people are paying for concert tickets and all of that, that's like a, we have extra money. Let's go to the concert. And then Burn the look her edges at the season finale. Because I ain't know who she was. Girl, Nicka look a mess. Hilarious. She looks so out of fucking place. You gave me some, you gave me some information about like my fertility journey and I appreciate you. I, I, well, and, and we are wishing you a warm. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. yeah. So y'all now. Yeah. Oh, see, but then we hold. On. Okay, yeah, I'm good because I feel like y'all could have put this on the tripod. I'm so annoyed by that whole situation. Why is Nikki holding her own phone? Just so many questions. Anyway, oh, y'all. So what you say? I said, why is the filter so thick? Uh, because nobody wants to look their actual old ass age. Oh my god. Right, we're gonna have a quick little like. Come back for a few times. Okay. 